Hi everyone and welcome to Tim Topham TV episode 7 where we're talking to Carly McDonald from Adelaide all about how to build a multi-teacher piano studio. I'm really excited about this episode. It's going to be great fun uh, and I'll speak to Carly in just a second but I did want to thank you guys for watching. We're up to episode 7 already. The feedback's been great and I do understand that you guys are, as piano teachers, as music teachers in general, always going to be short of time and pushing to do a million things at once. So... To have you as listeners and regular followers, I really do appreciate it, so thank you very much. Now, just before we get into today's episode, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Music Teachers Helper, which is a software I use to organize my studio. The kind of things you can do with it are scheduling lessons and automatically emailing lesson reminders to parents and students. You can accept payments and get tax reports. There's a lending library where you can get an email when something's due back. There's a repertoire tracker, uh, which is fantastic for the 40-piece challenge and, and people that are really trying to keep track of how much music their students are learning. So if you're interested, head to www.musicteachershelper.com forward slash Tim. You can register for a 30-day trial, and if you choose to continue after that, you're going to get 20% off your first month with that link. So there will be a link to that in the show notes, uh, and I reckon we should get started. So my guest today is Carly. She began her teaching career in 2002, and just three years later, she formally established Nova Music Learning Centre which has grown to a music school with five locations offering theory and instrumental lessons and a variety of uh, instrumental um, lessons on a variety of instruments. Carly also blogs at Creative Piano Professional, and in 2013, Carly became an international Australian ambassador for the Piano Adventure series by uh, Randall and Nancy Faber and has a special interest in early learning. Carly is a contributing writer for the Piano Teacher magazine in Australia and teaches around 43 students a week in addition to being the general manager of Nova Music. She's also mother to a nine and a half and an eight-year-old. I don't know how you do it, Carly. Welcome this morning. Thank you so much for being with me. Morning, Tim. Now, um... I might have covered everything in your background, but is there anything, any other useful info that, uh, that teachers and people listening might, uh, might find interesting about your current situation and how many students you've got and, and how you actually manage to do everything? It's very busy. It's always very busy. Um, probably the the biggest piece in the in the puzzle is that I also have a business degree. I have a commerce degree um, in my background as well. Okay. So when I'm coming from the business perspective and talking about those things, that's sort of where I come from um, is the degree. Yeah, and I imagine that's obviously been quite a big use to you in your setting up your business. Yeah, well, at the time when I was doing it, I was, think, I was wondering how it was going to be useful to me. <laughs> and it's taken quite some time, but now I feel like, They've, they've come together. Yeah. Um, and so now I feel like I'm actually using that three years that I spent at university. Um, so, so it's nice. It's yeah. nice to see it come together. I think a lot of us when we're at uni feel exactly the same way. Why yeah. the hell am I doing this? Yeah. So it's great that you're making use of it. So tell us about your studio uh, today as in number of teachers and students and, and, and kind of how just a quick overview of how it works and where it is. Sure. Well, we, I'm based in Adelaide in South Australia um, and we teach in five different locations. So we go into schools after school hours um, and teach students there from the community, um, adults through to young children because we're there after school hours. Okay. Um, so the school at the moment, we have um, 16 teachers that I work with um, and it's uh, it's getting bigger and um, it's exciting. Um, this year we did start teaching, we have started teaching in-school hours at one school, taking over their music program and wow. running their, their entire in-school program, which has been a, a, an interesting learning curve. I bet, I bet. <laughs> um, it's, it's very different to what we do and what we offer um, elsewhere because we have to work so closely with the school. When we go into schools um, after school hours, we just operate as an independent provider. Okay. So the school doesn't have anything to do with us except hiring us the facilities. So, yeah, it's a, it's expanding in lots of different directions, um, and it's a lot of what I do now is um, managing um, the teachers that I work with. Yeah, so. I can imagine. Yeah, it sounds it sounds massive and such a huge undertaking. And I guess the reason why I was interested to to have you on is I'm sure there are other teachers out there who have you know got to the point where they've got long waiting lists and you know that they're, they're probably a little bit timid about actually hiring another teacher I, I certainly am you know if I've if I've got a whole lot of people wanting to learn with me I'd be like oh you know I, I, could anyone do it as well as I can I don't know how to hire the right people so that's what today is all about and I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into actually you know how you went about doing it yeah. so what did your studio look like before when you started teaching and before it started kind of building 
Yeah, well, when I started teaching, I was um, I was teaching with my teacher as well. She had too many students and she asked if I would like to do some teaching and I thought, oh, that's, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. How, <laughs> old, how old were you then? How old was I? Yeah. Um, I'd just come back from living in Japan for a year um, and was just before I turned 19. Okay. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and then I, I continued teaching when I was also working full time in another job um, after I graduated from my degree. And then um, I fell pregnant with my daughter and decided that teaching was a more family friendly option mm-hmm. um, rather than working 50 or 60 hours a week in my other job, um, that I could mold family life and teaching you know, into something that was more practical. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought, well, why not give it a crack? And um, and while I was on leave from my other position and when I had um, Ella, I just thought, well, give it a go. And um, I interviewed for my first teacher. I was maybe 38 weeks pregnant at the time oh, gosh, yeah. um, to take on my, the first teacher I was going to. And um, it's come full circle because um, – Two weeks ago, she actually gave birth to her first child. Oh wow! <laughs> so, um, and we still work together, and so it's um, it's a really nice, I don't know, coming of age, I suppose, for the business. <laughs> yeah. that we've still got the first person who who I interviewed, and um, and now she's in the same position I was. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, and I'd say that's a real testament to your management and the way you run your business to to have someone stay that long in that kind yeah. of an industry too because uh, I, I know yeah. from hiring teachers turnover is really fickle. high exactly yeah. Uh, yeah and particularly if you're only able to offer a few days or hours or so um when you when was it what was it that that made you decide i'm going to hire another teacher rather than just start a waiting list because my time's finite Okay. I can I can only be one on one teaching a certain amount of hours a week, mm. um, and I thought, well, I've got all this interest, and what can I do that can make sure that the people can have lessons and I can earn money and yep. <laughs> they can all be taught. So I wanted to set it up so that my family life could still be what I wanted it to be, mm. um, and that I could still run a business and develop a business that didn't require my time to be used. Yeah, sure. Yep. And I imagine, in fact, as the place has grown, although your work, you, you do a lot of work, you can decide how much of that you do and when you do it and things like that too. So it's more Absolutely. flexible. Yeah. Yeah, very flexible. Um, I also now have someone who works with me on Wednesdays um, and she does a lot of the admin for me for the business. Um, and that's really helped um free me up, I suppose, to do what I would prefer to be doing in the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So did you, uh, or how many students did you have kind of waiting or, or needing a new teacher when you decided to hire someone else? Or did four. you just, a oh, four, okay. Four. And so yeah. you hired that person and with the aim of them teaching just four students initially? No, just with the aim of I didn't have any more room or time mm-hmm. and if we started, it would get the ball rolling and um, she just wanted a little bit of work to start with and then we filled out her night of teaching and then I started getting inquiries for guitar and so I went, oh, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a go. Um, and and so I found a guitar teacher who, who wanted to come in and, and so it kept happening. Yeah, so it's, it's grown very organically at just as it, more inquiries yeah. have come in. Yes. You grow. Yeah. yeah. I, I, at times, I've made big pushes for certain things. Um, when we're starting at a new location or things like that, there's had to be quite significant work. But um, from the business background perspective, I think the, the best way for a business to grow is organically. Mm. Um, you need to be able to set up the policies and procedures and all the background mechanics so that the business can function. If a business just explodes, you're not going to get really good um, functionality down the track. You're just going to end up with constant scrabbling trying to make things work. Yeah. Um, so if you do things consistently and over time, then you're going to end up getting something that's going to work long term. Mm. 
Yeah, and putting those systems in place to help it grow. Absolutely, yeah. If you don't have the systems, then parents get angry and teachers are not happy and schools are angry. Yeah, I can imagine. And and your world is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. And just before we get into kind of the nitty-gritty of, uh, I'm sure people have got lots of kind of questions on their mind about how to actually do this. Did you have a, a mentor or someone you could ask questions about or is it just like just out on a limb, I'm just going to go for it and, and um, do my best? I- I grew up in a small business background. My family's um, owned and run small businesses for my whole life. Um, So when it comes to the business side of things, um, my family, the people who I normally would go to and ask questions of. Mm. Um, I'm also a part of a women's business um, network um, in South Australia. Um, that that I'm part of and they are fabulous. If they've got queries, they're from all different industries, but they come from a business perspective of small businesses and entrepreneurial people. So they often will know the person to go and speak to or um, just some snippet of random information that I needed. Yeah. Um, so I, I find that keeping yourself in networks of other people who own businesses is, is really helpful. Mm-hmm doesn't have to be other musicians um sometimes it, it needs to be people with different industry experience yeah. yeah so but from from the teaching perspective it's it's been my teacher um my teacher's fabulous when i started and she just encouraged me to to do everything that i wanted to yeah, yeah. does she still teach out of interest yes yeah, she she well Sometimes she's away <laughs> at the moment for the next two months so um so no uh but she's She's wonderful and yeah, um, yeah. and always been a really big champion of mine. So, yeah. That's great. It's, it's, it means a lot. I've, I've got that, that same kind of uh, mentor in my original piano teacher who's a great support for me and a great person to bounce ideas off. So I think yeah. uh, I hope that other people have someone like that that they can bounce ideas off too. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some of the challenges you faced in building this business? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> time. Time yeah. is a really big one. Um, it's it's always been interesting balancing the teaching side with the administration but then with also with the family stuff mm. because as any teacher knows, I, I teach 40-plus students a week but it's not just their lesson time that I'm I'm working for um, so it's it's their lessons and then it's the planning and the preparation that goes into everything and then on top of that managing my family and if one of my kids is sick or all those kinds of things mm. so um, so time time is huge yeah. yep. but then also planning like yep. actively proactively deciding I'm going to sit down and work out what I want mm-hmm. like I'm going to I'm going to work all these things out and then I'm going to follow my plan yeah. Uh, that's that's tricky yeah, to make absolutely. yourself do. And do you have yeah. do you have like a, a long term plan, five or ten years of what you'd like Nova Music to be, or yeah. is it just short term? Kind of in the next year, I want to achieve this. Uh, we have term term goals. Mm-hmm. We have um, yearly goals, and then we I have a five year plan. Great. So, oh, yeah. Cool. Um, they don't look fancy. There's no spreadsheets. Um, <laughs> it's what I do is get a, re- a piece of paper and get my coloured pencils out and just write everything down that I want and then I try and work backwards from that and see how I can get from where I am to where I want to be. And is that, um, is so that normally the, to do with student numbers? Like I'd like to have X uh, more guitar students or piano? Not really. Uh, it depends. Um, sometimes it's the, the shape of the business in different locations. Um, if it's working, if it's not, if we need to do some... Um, more liaising with schools Mm -hmm. Uh, if we want to change the format of our um, performance series for students for the year though it surrounds a lot of different things too yeah okay Mm, that's great all right so let's say I'm teaching in Melbourne over here and uh, I'm getting lots of inquiries I've got about five people on my waiting list and I'm going to take the plunge like you and I'm going to hire another teacher to help me Mm-hmm. So I imagine the first thing is hiring teachers. Can you give us some help about how on earth you go about doing that? Because, uh, you know, if you haven't interviewed people before, this would be really challenging. Yeah, it was. It, well, the first time I did it, it was challenging. But part of, I suppose part of my background was I did HR in my degree. Mm-hmm. So um, then I'd done some of that stuff. But still, trying to figure out that list of questions to yeah. ask yeah. was what do you ask? What do you need to know? What are you not allowed to ask as well? Because there's things you're not allowed to ask. Right. <laughs> um, 
Um, have, you, have you got some examples? Like what? Uh, you can't ask them marital status um, oh, yeah. if they've got children. Those that off the table completely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. But what I did was develop a a interview plan mm -hmm. essentially. So it goes from the moment I get a resume and that gets documented and looks like this. Okay. Can you see all the check boxes? Yep, yep. Yep. So there's lots of check boxes there for making sure the date that I've got received resumes, then if they're successful. And then it just keeps going down the list. Um, just so that we can keep track of everything. Yep. Um from a legal perspective and working with children um, perspective as well, just making sure that we're ticking all the boxes and all those things. Yeah. So um, when it comes to setting the interview, it's really important that you know what you want from yes. the interview. Yes. Don't go into it just going, oh, I'm going to have a coffee and yeah. see what they're like. <laughs> Um, it's it's really important to know what role you want to fill. Mm -hmm. um, you need to know what kind of candidate you require um, and you need to know what's going to make you say yes to that person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still think that in the first minute I make my decision right. about a candidate. Yep. Uh, I really, I only interview the people who look great on paper mm -hmm. um, because I've done enough interviews now that, I'm not interested in wasting my time. Absolutely. <laughs> and like one um, one year at the beginning of the year, I did 14 interviews to fill positions, wow. and that's it's, it's really time. It's mm. really time consuming, mm. um, and you know, really, I probably only needed to interview five yeah. of that 14. So since Was then, that I for decided. For one position or two? No, no, no. It was for multiple positions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I culled and then from the resumes I culled and then I um, interviewed for the positions. And I got great people, mm. but I could have probably just done a five-minute interview and it would have been okay. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> um, so streamlining your time would be a tip when it comes to interviews. Uh, and, yeah. And make, making sure the questions you ask are really relevant and going to give you the answers you want. Pointed. Uh, yeah, yeah. So have you, like, I'm, I'm thinking I'd probably want, if, my, if I'm going to hire someone who's going to teach beginners, for example, I might yes. want to know something about their method perhaps or how yes, they do absolutely. that. absolutely. So could well, you give us an example of like one kind of question yeah. that you might ask about that would be I would important be, to you? I would be really interested to get them talking more about their pedagogical approach. Mm -hmm. So um, a big thing that I do with my teachers is professional development so that I, I want to know that they're developing themselves and I'm okay with them not, not having all the answers because mm -hmm. none of us do. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, I want, so I don't have a problem taking on new teachers. I I was a new teacher. I got help from my mentor um, and I'm okay with that and I'm very big on developing the teachers I work with. So not having that background of teaching is okay when I interview people. It doesn't bother me. Okay. But I'm interested in their attitude towards learning and their attitude towards education and children and parents. Mm -hmm. And if they're the right person, then that's easy to work with. Um, it's easy to build their, their skills if they've got right. the right mindset. That's right. As long as as a as the person who runs the business, you're happy to invest the time mm -hmm. and effort in creating that um, so that you get awesome teachers to work with. That's great. Mm. If you don't have that time or the skills to necessarily develop them, then you'd be more interested in asking questions about their background. How do they teach? What do they teach? What's the structure of their lessons? Mm. What do they do with students? You know, those kinds of things. So I ask all that as well. Mm. But I'm really interested in what's behind all of that. Yeah. So I don't just I don't want the nice fluffy you know interview answers. Yes. I want tell me about. Um, how what you think about learning and children and those things because as a business we don't um push one method mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. um as a teacher i'm really big on just teaching to the child mm -hmm. and the student and the way that approach the works for them mm -hmm. so we don't have a method that we specifically push in yep. business teachers are free to choose all the material that they want for the specific child that they're teaching mm -hmm. so I'm interested to know how they do that mm. or how they choose because that's a plethora of different stuff that they can select from. Mm. Um, trying to distill that down into a program, I, I want to know that. How would they set a program yeah. for a student yeah. to learn? 
Oh, it sounds that was really helpful questions because I've always wanted to ask these. It's like yeah. really, 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 really <laughs> useful to know about. Yeah. So, so they're kind of, for me, that's that's what, what I'm looking for when I'm asking questions. I yeah. don't want yes or no answers. I want tell me more about how your brain works and whether or not I can work with you. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think it's great. And, you know, as everyone who knows, uh, who's a reader of my writing knows, I'm, I'm passionate about the pedagogy just like you. It's, it's about... Yeah. It's about continue pe- people that want to keep learning. That that's that's yes, just so absolutely. crucial. So it's so great to hear that you actually that's like top of your list almost yep. for hiring. It is, well, it is it is um, because I uh, when you choose to bring other people on board when you teach with them, they're reflecting your values mm. as a teacher. Like this is Nova Music is is my baby, and mm. I I don't want people working for me with me that that think otherwise like yeah. that, that it's that that's not important um so choosing someone right to start with can save you a whole lot of heartache later yeah absolutely yeah and if we just go back one step i should have asked too where do you advertise for teachers no oh, that's <laughs> oh that's an interesting <laughs> question <laughs> um it's it's um always depends on what kind of teacher you're after okay. so if you need someone who is already on the ball, already teaching, already, you know, got everything and can run with it, mm-hmm. then you need to be looking at your local music teachers association, going through colleagues for referrals, those yeah. kinds of things. Um, but at the same time, those kinds of teachers aren't necessarily going to want to work in a business for somebody else because they could just work for themselves. Sure, yeah. So then you need to look for someone who the business fits for them as well. So does do they not like the administration side of you know, being a piano oh, yes. teacher? Yeah. Do they not like someone who there are other benefits for working for me than they would be working for themselves? Mm. Yep, so they can just teach yeah, effectively. That's right, yeah. that's right. My teachers come in, they teach, they leave. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> they that's get paid. Um, uh, and that really, really works for some people. So just targeting where you're looking for those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I'm looking for a, a developing teacher so that I can um, have someone who's going to be with me for a longer amount of time, mm-hmm. um, and that's a really big um, thing in running a business, yeah, for me I want teachers who are going to stay because that's great for the kids. Um, yeah, absolutely, continuity and, yep. Yeah, yeah. So being able to provide that is means that I need to pick the right People who have got that trajectory in mm-hmm. their own career and because of the industry we're in it's the, the turnover is massive mm-hmm. um, so it is a really big consideration so if that's the case then I'd be looking online so going through um, the teaching forums that we're part of I've also found that Facebook ads through the business page have been extremely effective okay. um, so and I often get resumes just sent to me anyway yeah um, sure as you, as you get your name out there, it would, yeah. 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 So there's different avenues, but I think it's good to be cautious with which you choose to go down mm. um, as to the candidate you're looking for. Mm, sure. And it's going to be place, the area specific, I guess. The listeners in the States are going to have different things. They'll probably have, they'll, I know they have music teachers associations and they're strong. Um, yes. But no, it, it's good. What I, what I hadn't thought of is, is when you said that it you will advertise in different locations uh, depending on who you want because I imagine yep. my first reaction would be I would just kind of put my ad wherever I possibly could sort of thing so I think that's really a great tip yeah some of the some of the best teachers that I've had come to me have been through the best teachers I currently have so they'll say I know so and so and and then they'll start the process um, it's I, it's best because they are already great teachers for me mm. and they wouldn't recommend someone they didn't think was going to be great. So it sort of cuts through the process as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, just to have a quick break, I was just going to let everyone know that there will be notes on this episode at timtopham.com uh, forward slash uh, episode seven. Uh, so if you're madly taking notes, uh, that's a great idea, but we will also have links to anything we've talked about in the show notes. Now, I just want to go back to uh, PD. You mentioned that you're, you're big on PD, which is fantastic. Do you, um, do you do that in-house? Do you hire people in or do you send your staff away for PD and do you cover their costs? Uh, well, all of the people who work for me are subcontractors. So they most of them work in multiple locations mm-hmm. um, and do lots of things as is normal for our industry. They all work in lots of different places. So um, the first 
uh, Australasian Piano Pedagogy Conference that I went to was in mm. Sydney in 2009. And um, the, my, the first teacher that ever started working with me, she um, I paid for her to come with me um, to the conference okay. um, and brought her with me. I really think that giving people access to PD, like letting them know when stuff's available, like pushing out information. So mm. this is available, this is here. Um, the Amy B is offering this training day, um, the ones for South Australia are on this, just providing the information, information. is a huge um, step up because lots of teachers don't even know where that stuff is <laughs> sure. or when it's on. Yeah. I do a lot of the PD myself um, because that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's your thing. That's yeah. my thing. Yeah. Um, so... So I provide that as well. And I'm also um, big on one-on-one -on -one PD. So if they have questions or they've got students they're, not, they're just hitting a roadblock with, then they're always welcome to come to my home studio and we go through repertoire and um, talk about approaches for students and, and that kind of stuff or just catch up for coffee and mm. um, see how they're travelling and, and whether or not like anything they need or anything like that. I, I always feel like I should be doing more of it though. Like <laughs> I just... It's, it's, I was, just gonna say, I was just going to say, I think I want to come and work for you, Carly. It sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Now, you just mentioned your home studio. I was just going to ask you about locations as well. So let's sure. say I've, I've decided I've hired someone who can teach my extra five students. Uh, yes. Where do they teach? What do I do? when I, it, Just to get started at least. I, I, let's say I don't have enough money to hire a separate studio or something. It's very, it's very much dependent on your individual situation. Um, I've never had anyone else teaching my home studio. Um, that's my home and yeah. that's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, I have, I host performance parties and things like that in, in the studio, but um, I'm not comfortable with someone else coming and teaching in my home. Mm -hmm. So that's just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and I imagine a lot of teachers would be in the same thing. It's like, no, that's, that's yeah. my space. So what, what would I do? Where would I go to find space for that other person to teach in? Yeah, well, the place that I was already teaching was a school and it was after school hours and we were hiring the rooms. So it just depends on your cost structure and the way you set it up and how much it costs you to hire it and then what you choose to charge for the lessons and all of the cost breakdown of, of things. Mm -hmm. I would be looking for another location. Um, schools are often happy for you to be in their after school hours as long as they have a developed relationship with you already and you're not just a random person coming to ask to use their rooms. Sure. Um, so there's also community facilities and um, churches and uh, lots of other places that, that do have pianos in them mm. um, and it really depends what instruments you're teaching. So if some instruments require the piano to be there and others don't so you just need space to be able to do it all of the locations we teach in are schools yeah, so sure. they already have the facilities it's the pianos are already there um they are set up for students so um, it's worked for us um, yeah. and i haven't ever attempted for it to be anywhere else other than yeah. and i imagine schools are quite happy with that because they um would otherwise be unused after hours probably yeah yeah. yeah, they can make money off a facility they already have and they do no work for it. So yes. yeah. they're happy. Yeah. <laughs> I like it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's say I've got my, uh, my room at a school, my teacher's in there. Next big question, how do I set the prices that I charge? Mm -hmm. That is completely up to you as the person who runs the business. Okay. So um, when you look at your pricing structure, though, it's really important to look at all of your real costs. You can't just say, oh, this going rate's this much. Mm. Well, that might well be, but can you make any money if that is the going rate? So um, I have a fancy spreadsheet and <laughs> <laughs> it just has the cost breakdown of everything that I've got that is an expense that's included in the business. So that when I say this is what we charge, that's what we actually have to charge to break even and for there to be any reason for me to run the business. Sure, sure. So, um, so you have to consider things like, for me, um, in the area that we live in, because you have work cover and you have uh, lots of different insurance things and so you have to look into that for your jurisdiction and for where the, the business rules and tax liabilities and things like that for where you are. Mm -hmm. 
but for me, it's it's um, considering the room hire expenses and the teachers and um, work cover and insurance and all of that stuff. Performing um, opportunities for students, they all cost money. So yeah, yeah. factoring all of that in and even down to we have to in- keep um, increasing our music library because, yeah. well, that's keep- kind of important. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, and so budgeting all of that in making sure that you can pay for all of that. Mm. All of those things is what will go towards figuring out how much you need to charge. Mm. So um, in the, let me find it, that one, the Piano Teacher Magazine. So this is the Australian Piano Teacher Magazine? Yeah. 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 So so I'll put a link to that, uh, an online version of that on the show notes for everyone. Excellent. Um, Well, this, I've written an article in here which will give people a breakdown in a, a chart of how much um, you can charge or how much you'll earn um, for your lessons. And it's not um, saying how much you should charge. Mm-hmm. It's saying these are the things you need to consider, consider. when you are when you are doing it. Um, music teachers associations are sometimes helpful um, in regards to that. But at the end of the day, you charge what you want to charge and stick to it. Mm-hmm. And you're running a business, not a charity, so you need to be able to do so, earn a living, but also um, be paid what you're worth. So often piano teachers are very good at underestimating what they're worth. <laughs> Valuing <laughs> themselves, absolutely. To- and, they do it um, all the time. Yeah, and um, you shouldn't because very t- piano teachers are very highly skilled. Mm. Um, and in addition to that, they're running a business. Mm. Um, so you need to factor in your time and your costs when you're thinking about what the lesson expense is going to be. Mm. And sometimes parents uh, <laughs> need a bit of educating in that regard, don't they? Yeah, and I've found as well, though, that people are willing to pay for good service. So um, when my business doesn't charge the least amount of money that mm. that lesson can be provided for, um, but we also don't provide the least service that sure. can be provided. And I'm not interested in... a a game, a race to the bottom of price. Um, I would far prefer to have an excellent business that provided all the services that they could want. Um, and if they choose to have lessons with us, that's fabulous. And I, I will do my best to make sure it's as good as it can be. Mm. And if they don't, that's okay too. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. And I assume teachers uh, would understand that they wouldn't be paid as much as they could charge for themselves teaching in their yeah. home. Yeah, um, when the, I interview people, everything's really upfront um, with how much they earn. Um, and uh, the longer teachers work with me and the more skilled they are, the more they earn. And um, they also don't have to do any of the admin or the chasing money or anything that is the, I don't know, the, the hard, the tough bits yeah. that piano teachers normally don't like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um mm-hmm. I set up all of the performance opportunities, all of the concerts, um, everything, and we have eight this year that our students eight have access concerts. to. Uh, summer concerts. Yeah. Summer, summer. We have two full-size concerts at the end of the year that are catered. And, like we have bring caterers in and oh, it's wow. formal when it's, yeah, it's big. Um, and then we have a recital. Um, we also have four performance parties or three performance parties at my home studio where the kids come and they play board games and um, play music to each other and chill out and have afternoon tea and that kind of stuff. Okay. So not a formal yeah, sit down and listen. It's much more casual. No, it's very casual. We just wanted to create a different um, a different performance scenario for kids just getting into it so that they could meet other children who played so that that became a norm for them to know other music Fantastic idea. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. It's really taken off. I think the last one we had, there was 18 children there and my house was very full. <laughs> I bet, I bet. Do you structure that at all? Like do you have a set time? Okay, a few people are going to play at 4 o'clock and all well, that sort of like. Uh, no, we, I think we start normally start about 2 and yeah. they come and they. I have board games set up, three or four of them normally, and I get some of my older students to be in charge of one of them each so mm. that they there's some kind of format because yeah, <laughs> yeah. five-year-olds are not so good with board games sure. and getting themselves organized <laughs> the, are these so, musical uh, board games or not necessarily no no, no um like trouble and operation and yeah. you know and kaplunk and those kind of games are really good for the kids yeah 
it breaks the ice. It means they start talking and mm-hmm. they, you know, get together and they don't feel awkward standing around waiting for something to happen. Um, and then I'll say, okay, who wants to play? And one of them will wander up to the piano or their instrument and play. Or, and um, and then we have food and then more people will play and then there's food and then there's games and yeah, it so sounds sounds fantastic. I love yeah, your, I love your, you just you think outside the box, which I love. I love your energy, but I really like how you just go. Oh, let's try something different. Why? Why get everyone sitting there in a stony silence at a terrifying stage? You know, let's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted great. to create joy and um, that sense of community around the music, and that it's not petrifying. Like it mm. can be really fun. Um, mm. And then when they do go to the more formal concerts later in the year that they know there's familiar faces, they know yeah, one another. absolutely. Um, and it sort of brings down their stress levels as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, the only the other things we do this year, we're trying out a wine and cheese night for our adult students. Um, so that will get, get me along. <laughs> yeah. So the, um, the adult students don't tend to be as keen on the performance parties because that's little kids playing and they don't feel great if they're a beginner and they're playing the same material as a six-year-old. Totally or, understand. You know, yeah. So we're trying to create a more uh, grown-up environment um, for them to still be able to share their music because they're often really nervous and mm. a concert's not the best place for them to start. Absolutely. Um, so. And a bit of wine helps take the nerves off. <sighs> there will be soft drink <laughs> options as well. <laughs> I think it's great. We're getting yeah. all, these, all these ideas about recitals now. It wasn't even on our topic list, but uh, so yeah. great for you to share them. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. The, the last one that we do is an um, a, uh, exam panel. Um, so we have lots of students who sit exams towards the end of the year. Mm-hmm. So we set a date about a month before that where we have three teachers that will sit on a, pa- a panel and any students who want to come and play um, can come and get written feedback. Fantastic. So, a mock um, exam. Kind of, yeah, kind of. Um, yeah. Just positive, constructive feedback so that they've got a few weeks leading into their exam and can, yeah, get that done. So that's all our stuff. Wow, so much to organise. I don't know yeah. how you do it. Yeah, it's busy. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I, I know that um, tax and legal obligations are going to be different in everyone's jurisdiction, but have you got any just overarching just things that, to check for, for teachers who want to hire some other teachers about what, yeah yeah have have a really great accountant okay um, <laughs> yeah because I, and I would really recommend that you get someone who's interested in small businesses so that they really know the rules because that's so important and they can steer you in the right direction from the beginning so um, what I did was I just did my own stuff until I got to a point where I went. Nah, I think I should probably go and talk to somebody. <laughs> yep. And then I did, and I wish I'd done it sooner because he could have pointed me in the right direction so much faster. And it really wasn't as expensive as I thought it was going to be to have um, the professional advice. And every year, I'm sure he saves me more money than I spend on him. So um, I would say go and talk to somebody, a professional, in different whatever. Um, location and country you're in I'm sure there is a business body as well for small businesses that you could talk to mm-hmm. in where I am it's business SA um, and they are absolutely fantastic there are so many resources on their website um, so I would go and look at that so that you know your legal obligations as well it's a great tip yeah yeah and the way you choose to um, have someone else working with you is going to be determined by the legalities of your area. So it might be best for you to take them on as an employee and then you have considerations that you will also have to have in how they're remunerated and all of the other legalities Mm. and you really need to know your stuff so you have to look at it. Um, And so, yeah, it really depends on where you are. So Mm. research what the legalities are um, with the business as they kind of body and then also talk to an accountant yeah okay great great tips um and i think you mentioned work cover earlier that's an australian thing it is i think yeah so that that's that's a in insurance effectively premium that you pay to the government the work cover body to cover eventualities yes it is claims yeah so uh, there may well be things like that in other countries i'm not sure but again do some research And, and through the business bodies, you'll get a lot more information about what's um, what's required and what has to happen. Um, my accountant was actually the person who told me all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I 
really, really suggest that people go and talk to someone before they start because they can they can head you off at the pass if you're going down the wrong place at all and, you know, um, it won't cost very much and it will probably save you a lot of time. Yep. And yep. maybe money down the track, even if it yes. is a few hundred dollars. Yes. Worthwhile. Absolutely. Yeah. Very worthwhile. And I mentioned uh, Music Teachers Helper, who's a sponsor, you know, one great way for studios to manage finances. Um, but I imagine as things get bigger and bigger and you have more people, I don't imagine a shoebox of receipts kind of works so well. Do you have no. uh, a go-to software solution or something that you use for that? Um, I use Mail. Um, my, my, that's, so that's MYOB. Yeah, MYOB. Yep. yeah. Um, it was what my accountant suggested. I was previously using something else, and as the business grew, it just was too cumbersome. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I was at university, part of what I did was write a database and some pretty fancy spreadsheets, which is what I started with. Right. And it was working fabulously until the business grew to a certain point where it just <laughs> wasn't going to work. Um, so I had to transition and that probably happened two years ago now that the business transitioned past the point where I could stretch the database and spreadsheets any further. Mm. It was limping along at the best and then there was a huge change. And that was really scary to have to pick up all that information and dump it somewhere else because the input alone into the new software oh, was... I can't imagine. <laughs> it, it was time consuming. Um, but... It, it turned out to be really good because there were all these other things that I could suddenly do that were streamlined. And um, so whilst changing your software to something might be a battle at first, mm -hmm. it's worth it if you if you can get all these other benefits. So um, for me, it worked and MYOB works and it's what my accountant wants me to use, which at the end of the day is important. Um, so... Yes. Oh, software. Software's <laughs> fun. <laughs> Make sure you have a really good backup system. Okay. That's So having something that's just on your computer is not a safe way to run your business. Mm. Um, so, so I'm from what I understand, Music Teachers Helper is online. Mm -hmm. So that's right. Yeah. So it means that you have off-site backup, which means that you're not um, – if your computer dies, your business doesn't. Yes. Um, yeah. So having a really good backup solution is important. Absolutely, yep. And we'll put a link to MYOB in the show notes. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, now I've got just a few more questions. One of them is about your teachers. How do you make sure that they're teaching the way you want them to teach, given that it's all closed doors, one-on-one, -on -one, you don't, really do, or perhaps you go in and have a look every now and then at what they're doing? I actually don't observe my teachers. Uh, I don't think it's great for the students and <laughs> and I also think that teachers become extremely self-conscious when they've got someone looking over their shoulder. Mm. Um, regular check-ins with teachers um, is good. Mm -hmm. um, also, choosing the right people to start with is extremely important um, and that's why the interview process is so valuable. Even though I know within the first few minutes if they're the right person, Going through the process is really important to get the details of how they're going to teach and how um, how effective you think they're going to be. Yeah, and whether they're going to be open to feedback, I guess. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when a, a new teacher starts with me, if they don't have very much experience, then I work with them quite heavily on mm -hmm. how they're teaching and teach um, their plans. Um, so just having term plans for students. And I know things change every lesson depending on the student and how much work they've done and what happens, but having a good plan overall. Um, so I work with them on their plans to make sure that it's all good. And that way it's a really good one of checking and seeing if I'm happy with the way things, the way their mind's working, I guess, yeah, about, sure. yeah. about the teaching. Yeah. Um, we have lots of performance opportunities for students and that's a fabulous way of making <laughs> for you to for you to see what's actually going on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good check and balance. Um, and I have really good relationship with our parents um, of our students, and I'm the person who's who deals with stuff beyond the weekly lesson. Okay. So um, parents are not backwards in coming forwards if there's a problem. Mm. Um, so I deal with all that. Yeah, and, sure. And um, it's pretty easy to put pieces together if things aren't going right. Mm, okay. And without wanting to make this sound like I'm interviewing you for a job, what, uh, like have you, have you had 
some had to have some difficult discussions with some teachers who are underperforming before and how do you approach yeah. that yeah absolutely um how do i approach it how do i say that without <laughs> <laughs> um uh, oh, I work, is it kind of a matter of you know saying okay this is this is what we're observing I really want to help you and this is how we can let's try yes. these ideas sort of thing yeah a lot of it is that so if I get something from a parent or um, I'm checking on something and something just doesn't look like it's kosher mm. um, then it's, it's just the process of having a conversation catching up um, doing more planning or more PD with a teacher if that's what the problem is mm -hmm. um, but if the feedback I'm getting from a parent is more a personality issue um perhaps then uh do what you can um limit the damage yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. um and um try and find a teacher fit that works better sure um that is one of the really big bonuses of working with a group of teachers is that not every student will work with every teacher mm. so we can actually like change if necessary for students if um, if a teacher's just really not working and I've done everything that I can do that's feasible, mm -hmm. I just don't give them new students. Uh, okay, yep, yep. Because the, that's the way it goes. Yep. Um, well, you've got to, you know, you've got to prove your worth to get, get more students. And I imagine the same goes, you know, when you get a great teacher, you you know, you can give them more students. So Absolutely, yep, yep. Um, and you can load them up pretty quickly um, as long as the inquiry's there to do so. Mm. Um, so I've become a bit more ruthless, I think. Um, well, you, <laughs> the kind of have, you have to be, don't you? The longer I've been running the business, um, I really care for our teachers and I really want the best for them and I, I want the best for our students. Mm. Um, and as long as we're all on the same page and moving in the same direction, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, all right, last, uh, I think this is my last question. Thank you so much for all these. Okay. Uh, do you have any recommendations for, uh, you know, I don't know, blogs about this or books or people yep. to follow online or anything? Uh, there's, oh, there's a, a few. Um, Wendy Stevens is fabulous. Okay. Um, That's uh, Compose, Compose Create. Create, great. We'll put yep. a link to that in. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan and, of Wendy's. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And she's got some great things on there that, um, that can – um, be helpful to teachers as well. There's a book called The Independent Piano Teacher. Okay. Um, and that's a really great one for, it's got some policy outline kind of documents in it and just good tips and tricks for teachers who are new mm -hmm. as well to the game and want to, are thinking about setting up a studio or things like that. That's a really good one. Um, oh, hmm. Trying to think of other things that I use online. A lot of it would be non-music based. Sure, um, as you were saying, with the, the, yeah. the support groups you've got around you, they're just business ones, aren't they? They are. So um, uh, the the um, I, it's the group that I'm involved in is called Women's Business, um, and it's for entrepreneurial women in my area. Um, so that's that something that people could look out for um, in their area and look outside your industry and see if you can find a group of support um, that's like that. But sometimes people are involved in things like Rotary or um, clubs, service clubs. They can be really great sources okay. of um, – because they're often professionals who have background in lots of different things um, and have a wealth of knowledge. Um, so they would be good places as well. Mm. But the, any business places that you've got. So for Australians, it would be the tax office as mm. well. Their website has, if you know how to search on their website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been, sometimes that can be tricky. Yeah, but, yeah. but that can be a good source. And also um, Business SA, I, I would use um, with some regularity as well. Yeah. Um, so I've got some things up on my website as well on the blog mm. um, that will hopefully be helpful. Um, yeah. And... I'm going to the Australasian Piano Pedagogy Conference in July for all of the Australians yes. in Melbourne. Let's, let's give that a plug now because that's yes. so and important. It, well, it is. And if people can get there, it would. it's just so worthwhile. Um, and you get all this information and people that you can talk to mm. that know stuff mm. and you can make contacts with them. Um, and that's I think, where we met was at one of the conferences. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and then you know you've got people you can go to and talk to about stuff whenever you need to. So if I need to know something, I just flick you an email and say, Tim, what's go? And it's 
it's a connection that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So yeah. if people can go to them, they'll not only get all of the information that's presented at the conference, but they also get the connections in the industry. Mm. So that's the APPC uh, 2015, which is in Melbourne. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Yeah. That's for all and the Aussies. And, yeah, and, and I'm sure if you want to fly over to Australia, it's only absolutely. So just a hop, skip and a jump away from Europe and America. Yeah. Um, I'm presenting a business stream um, at the conference. Oh, so there's six um, presentations I'm doing on um, business planning and business development and all of all of the kinds oh, wow. of things we've been talking about today. So um, I'm really excited to be able to um, present the stuff that I do. Um, oh, that's great, and Carly. And I can back up 100%. I've seen Carly present before and it is in always inspiring and fun. So definitely get along to those. That's, yeah, that's great. I, I'm looking forward to it. So um, it's going to be it's going to be crazy and hectic, but it's going to be great. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and I, I, I was just thinking before, you mentioned policies before. I imagine having policies is probably quite an important uh, important factor. Yes. And I know Wendy Stevens shares policy, yes. some of her ideas, things that like make up lessons and things like that. Yes. Perhaps, um, I mean, people can probably Google for ideas about other people's policies, can they? Yes. Yeah, they can. And um, online forums and places to go um, for the international people, there's some um, Facebook forums um, and things like that that people sometimes share or if you've got queries about, you can always ask. Um, the Australians, there's the Australian, Australian Piano Teachers um, Forum that they can join and people are quite, um, I think people are quite generous with the information that they share. Um, with Wendy Stevens, Diane Heidi, they all have great policy documents. Um, and Google it. Yes. Um, I've I've been working on some things that are more pro forma um, policies to go on my blog. So if you keep up with that, absolutely, we'll, <laughs> you'll we'll link get them. We'll, we'll definitely talk about your blogging. Well, right this up. is this is my policy procedure manual, right? Um, for my business, and it's quite thick. Wow. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But it's also, it, it's shaped and it's specific to my business and that's because it's my business. Yeah, <laughs> and I also story. wanted to write something that was, was um, if I wasn't here, someone could pick up this document and they could keep running my business. Mm. Um, so it's quite detailed and it's not what most piano teachers would need to have. No, but particularly you when you're do, getting started, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. But if, when you're getting started, you don't have an enrolment procedure or a enrol like policy around enrolment, then you're not communicating with your clients mm -hmm. very well either. Mm -hmm. So having just some base pro forma policies and procedures in place will really help because then you know what you're doing and they know what you're doing. And you know, I, I think it's fundamental to any business. Yeah, absolutely. And by pro forma, what do you what do you mean by that? Uh, I just mean a um, a baseline one. So what I'll do is create a base one that people can adapt to their own studios. Oh, okay, okay. So a, ba I, a basic outline, and you can put yeah. some slightly different words in where you need That's to. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that it's a standard that people can just adapt to suit their personal circumstances. Yeah. Did you say you had some of them on your blog? There are at the moment. There's a business plan um, oh, on the blog, which has got a, um, a rundown of um, some different business planning. Okay. And um, in the works for coming months is the, some of the other policies and procedures that, that I think are fundamental to having a successful business. So yeah. where do listeners go to find you, Carly? Creativepianoprofessional.com um, is the blog. And um, more regularly they get things on Facebook. So just if they um, Facebook search for creative piano professional yep. um, they should see me pop up fantastic and i like your page and i follow your blog and i can highly recommend it to all the listeners out there Thanks, really Tim. great great information regularly from carly it's fantastic all right i think i think i've got through all my questions that was so helpful and i really hope it's going to be a great help to uh to listeners and thank you for sharing too i, I imagine that um, a lot of business owners would play their cards very close to the, their chest and, and not share so much. So it's really wonderful that you're happy to share so much information. Yeah, no, I think as an industry, we need to support each other in creating um, strong businesses um, because uh, in my experience, musos aren't so great at business. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we've got the information, um, it's, it's really good and important to share it. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully, you know, we, we make fewer mistakes in the process if we can learn from other people. 
Well, I have. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We're going to learn from you. Um, yeah. Now, I think you've been really kind and you've, you've offered us a, a cheat sheet download for this. So yes, what's, what's that um, going to help us with? So it looks something like this. Um, mm -hmm. And it's all about interview questions. So how to, it's just some ideas about how to set up a good interview, but then also some of the questions that I do use um, for, for the interviews. So if that helps people in getting over those initial nerves about having to take someone new on board and how to find them or um, what to ask even, hopefully that's useful to you. Uh, that's absolutely brilliant because it was pretty much my first question, you know, yeah. how, do you, how do you find the right people? So thank you. That's fantastic. We'll put a link to that on the show notes page, which you'll be able to find at uh, timtopham.com forward slash episode seven. And that's the number seven. All right. Uh, so anything else, anything I forgot that you're itching to tell us about Carly or is we, I think we've covered everything. I think, I think for the moment we have covered everything, but if anyone has any questions, just um, chat them to me probably on the Facebook page. It's always best. Okay. And yep. I'm happy to answer questions that anybody has as well. Fantastic. And there'll be questions at the bottom of the show notes page, so you can leave ones there. And if we get any for you, Carly, I'll, I'll shoot them across to you as well. Um, otherwise, I'll say a massive thank you. And again, thank you to all the listeners. It's such a great support to have so many people downloading these episodes. Um, and I'd love to have you leave a review on iTunes if you've got spare it just takes a couple of minutes to get a few more reviews on itunes would be fantastic the instructions of that uh, are on my blog under the podcast menu at the top and i'll put a link to that as well in the show notes so big show notes page coming up thanks so much carly my uh, pleasure and uh, i look forward to seeing you really soon yeah thanks very much tim